Hey kids, welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 6, Conditionals Investigate, and this is problem number two. At this point, you should have played the Lemon Squeezy game already, and from that, you should have gotten the basics of what this program does. But let's just recap quickly. Over here, we have two variables, score and lives. These are global variables because anything can use them, all of these on events. As we move down, we have a button to start the game and that's gonna do exactly that. When the play button is clicked, score is gonna be set to zero and lives is gonna be set to three. Then we're gonna set some text on the screen that says the score and the lives. It'll get a fun little noise and we'll switch to the game screen. Next, we come down here to when the lemon gets rolled over or the mouse goes over the lemon, we get a fun little sound. Our variable score is now going to be equal to whatever the score was, plus one, so that's adding one to our score. Down here, the lemon and the lime is going to get moved to a random X and Y coordinate, and that's going to be between 50 and 220. Why those numbers? Well. Your screen is roughly 320 by 450. These numbers just put the lemon and lime fully visible within the screen. A popular little line of code you're gonna see a lot moving forward, the update screen. Here we're just updating the label with the score and lives. Down here we have what happens when the mouse touches the lime. We get a fun little sound. Lives, our variable, is now going to be equal to lives, whatever our lives were, minus one. We also have the same random positioning, so the lemon and lime will go to another spot on the screen. And then we update our screen with the score and the lives. If we run out of lives, we're going to have something happen here. If our lives is less than zero, well, we're going to switch to a start screen and say, you collected how many ever lemons we collected, and we're going to print this out on the screen. Down here, we're checking to see if we have an even or odd number of lemons. If you don't remember, kids, mod just gives you the remainder. This mod you see down here is a very popular one in coding. A lot of times we just want to figure out if something's even or odd. And how we do that is mod it. For example, if we had a score of 10, well, 10 mod 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, plus two that'll give us 10. Well, that's equal to zero, so that'd be an even number. But if it was 11, we're going to have a remainder of 1. And that would be odd. And any number, whatever it is, is going to be able to use the same mod method. Well, that's how our program works. Let's see what we have to do. Well, we played the game already, so we're going to skip that. We just talked about how the mod operator works. And to visualize it a little better, let's jump over to an old lesson of code.orgs and see the mod clock. Kids, I love this visualization here. This really shows me what the mod clock is. Example I was talking about earlier, 10 mod two. We have two pieces of a pie here. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two is 10. If we just hit go here, you can see it'll go back and forth. No remainder. If we do 11, we'll get a remainder of one. More important part of this, and for this lesson, we're going to have to know mod 5. Let's say we have 3 mod 5, 3 pieces going in. We didn't complete it, so our remainder is 3. That is the same if we did 33. We're going to have the same remainder. This helps me think of what a mod does and hopefully it helps you with the following problem. Hopefully that mod clock helped you visualize what the mod actually is. Let's get into the heart of the lesson. It takes five lemons to make one cup of lemon juice. Instead of telling the user if the number of lemons collected is even or odd, 
Tell them if they have the exact number of lemons to make a whole cup of lemon juice without wasting any lemons. If they don't have an exact number of lemons, tell them how many more they need to have an amount of lemons to make an exact number of cups. Hmm. So what we have to do is we have to figure out whether or not the user has five lemons. Every time they get five lemons, well, that's going to equal one cup. And the reason they had you talk about the mod up here, well, I think we can use that same mod principle down here. Let's think of a practical example. Let's say you had three lemons and we want to figure out how many you have left. Well, if you have a pie with five slices and you only got three lemons, it's only going to fill three. So you're going to have a remainder of three. That tells us what we have. Now, we know we need five. So if we subtract whatever we have from five, that'll tell us what we need. Let's start off with the basics there. The next part, I think is gonna be a little more tricky because what if we have 38 cups? How are we gonna tell the user how many more they need? And we'll get to that in a second. Let's take care of the easy part. Where we're gonna be coding at is down here. Remember it said, get rid of the even and odd Let's go down here. And we're still going to have two choices. One, the user got five and they don't need any more. They performed it perfectly. They had 35, 45, or 50. Else is what if they had 38, 42, 54? How are we going to tell the user that? Let's take care of the easy one first here. Let's take care of our exact amount. And really, we could do something pretty similar to here, except we're not looking for even and odd. We're looking for a mod of five. So let's put a mod of five there. That's going to tell us if we have five mod five, we're going to equal a zero. We're not going to have any remainders. That means we've got enough. Let's change our label here. Instead of saying an even number of lemons, let's say you collected the exact amount of lemons. Now we need to take care of our else. And we're going to need that mod 5 again. And remember how I said, hmm, I bet if we subtracted the amount we need 5 from whatever our mod remainder was, it would give us how many lemons we need. And in order to do that, we're going to have to add a variable. And this is going to be a local variable, kids. So this is only going to be within an accessible within this event right now. I'm going to have to declare a new variable. So we need the var. And let's just call this what it is. Lemons needed. And this is going to be equal to how many lemons we need total? Five. And we're going to subtract that from what? Well, whatever our score is, mod five. And I'm putting that in parentheses because I want that to happen together and then be subtracted from five. Why did we create a new variable? Remember, kids, you can only do two things with a variable. You can print it on the screen or you can save it. And since we need to store this, we need to create a new variable to do that. All we have to do now is change our label. You need, and we'll do a space, and let's concatenate, and we're going to use our variable, lemons needed, plus again, some quotes more lemons to have an exact number of lemons for lemonade. Looks like I ran off the screen here. I have no idea what I'm typing. Let's just shrink this down. And now we got that there. Let's make sure we put our quotes like that. So you need 
And then we're gonna pull this number here, more lemons to have an exact number of lemons for lemonade or lemon juice, whatever you're making, right? Let's try this out. We have our lemon. We have two, four. Let's get some limes here. Uh oh, this one's gonna be hard. And you collected four lemons. You need one more lemon to have an exact number of lemons for lemonade. Well, that works pretty good. We can also take this to the next level. We can also tell the user how many cups they have and how many more lemons they need to complete the next round of cups. Why would we do that? Let's start off with the easy part. We can do the even number. And all we're going to do for that is bring it in a variable, just like before. And this variable, we'll just call num cups, the number of cups we're making. And for this one, it'll just be our score, how many we ever have, 30, 40, 50. And if we divide that by five, that'll give us our number of cups. So score divided by five. Whether that number is 30, 40, 50, if it's even, it'll divide by five and give us the amount of cups that we have. And we can put that also in our little printout here. You collected the exact amount of lemons. And let's just say four. And then we're going to concatenate again, plus num cups. We'll do another plus, and we'll say for cups, we're running off the screen here, I'll move in a second, of lemon juice, and a quote. Let's go over here and see it. Shrink this down. Ooh, got double quotes there, and a whole bunch of misspellings. That was supposed to be cups like that. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a try. Play. And there it is for two cups. Looks like we need a little space over here. And it doesn't look like my fix for my lives from the previous lesson works. We also need to fix that. So we need a little space right there. And we need lives. It'll probably be easier to go to show text to be equal to, oops, equal to or less than zero. So if lives, ooh, that's the wrong way like that now when we get to zero lives we don't have to go below it for it to work let's reset our program here in anticipation that's the even number we have to do something for the odd number now and this is going to be a little different because num of cups is just your score divided by five and we really can't store that we need another variable let's go over here drag this out over here. What is this variable going to be? Well, it's going to be how many we need for the next cup. We'll just call it next cup. And what is this going to be? Hmm. Let's think about this. I think if we just do the score we had before, whether it's 36, 37, 38, and then we add the number of lemons needed, so two, three, four, and then divide that, that'll tell me how many cups I will need. So score plus the lemons needed divided by five. So we have to get to that even number still. That means it's gonna equal score plus my one from above, lemons needed, and we want this to happen together. And then after that, we want to divide, oops, no spaces, divide by five. 
And this number should be, if we round it up, how many cups would they have? We have to add that in here to this long, long sentence. Let's go all the way to the end here. Let's go over to text mode for this. This might be a little easier to see. Oh, and I spelled lemonade wrong. Lemonade. And what we're going to do here is we are just going to concatenate. Well, what should our sentence say? I guess it could say, you need, lemons needed, more lemons to have an exact number of lemons for, and instead of our lemonade, still need our quote, we'll do plus next cup variable, and that's going to say as above for our cups of lemon juice, period. That should give us our number. Let's see if this works. So we're going to run. We're going to play. We're going to try to get 12. Well, didn't get it. Looks like we also need to go to our design down here and just open this up a little. So we're going to go to our design, our element here. And we just want to drag this a little bigger down so we get all of our text. Common mistake I see, just make sure you have enough space for what you're putting in there. All right, let's try this one more time. Lucky 12. Now that's gonna be a hard one. All right, one more. Let's go for that. And you need three more lemons to have an exact number of lemons for three cups of lemon juice. How amazing is that? So to get how many next cups we needed, we just added the score plus the lemons needed divided by five. So in this example, you saw a basic way to do this and a little more advanced way. Hopefully after this explanation, it makes a little more sense. As always, kids, if you have questions, please come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.